Welcome to Take Your Life Back. Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, August 7th. Last night I had such problems sleeping thinking about my friend uh, who I went to high school with who's having some uh, major issues with a family member who, who is addicted, uh, addicted to drugs and or alcohol. And I just thought to myself, I said, what can I do to try to help this particular person with some sort of maybe knowledge from uh, studying a little bit online and, and looking for some of the methods to deal with uh, family members who have drug and or drug, uh, drug addiction. So I said to myself, let me get up. And I did get up, uh, although I pretty much was awake due to some emails back and forth to China and India. And I started looking online and I kind of Googled and surfed and this and that and came across a couple uh, uh, so, uh, methods of how to deal with family members that are addicted and how to help them and how not to to uh, uh, try to do too much as far as um, pushing the issue. In other words, you don't want to ride on a situation that will cause them to actually run from the actual situation that they have which is drug addiction and and dive even deeper into it so what we're going to do is we're going to start right away and we're going to uh, go directly uh, to uh, the title of this particular segment which is how to deal with a drug addicted member of your family it could be your mother it could be your father it could be your husband wife children even grandchildren we're all getting to an age when I say we all my wife and I were at the age where grandkids are around and today's society is so much more advanced technologically uh, than it used to be and uh, things uh, peer pressure have become so much more severe so our children or I should say when we grew up it wasn't as bad I mean the major drug back then was alcohol and drug and, and marijuana which is pretty bad by itself but now you have heroin you have cocaine you have crack you have all these new drugs so we need to educate ourselves as parents and grandparents on what is out there and then educate ourselves on how to deal with our children and our grandchildren in this particular case this friend of mine has a grandchild uh, uh, who is so addicted to drugs and or alcohol that no matter what this particular person has tried has said uh, it's not doing any good so here are some methods and and I hope someone gets something out of this um, now mind you it's very hard for me to memorize all this so I do have as usual I have my cheat charts here so let's dive right into method number one is search online information about your loved ones form of addiction what does that mean I am an alcoholic so my form of addiction is alcohol and alcoholism there are people that have my addiction then there are people that have uh, drug addiction could be marijuana could be crack could be cocaine so what we need to do is we need to go online because honestly online it's amazing what you can learn online most of my videos with the facts that I deliver to you folks is from online information I will tell you this don't believe everything you read online of course some of the information could be uh, incorrect so what I usually do is I kind of backtrack in other words if I find one item uh, or an answer to my question I look to see if other people are answering or is it backed up by scientific uh, information or data um, the Mayo Clinic has a lot uh, of information there are tons of drug uh, addicted websites uh, that also supply lots of information so method one is to search online for information about your loved ones addiction that is so achievable if you just know how to use the internet the optional plan for uh, addiction that's what you need to come up with an optional plan uh, they have management and rehab centers that will help you with this uh, make some phone calls to your local rehab centers there is somebody I'm sure on staff that would love to give you some information method number two is seek professional and specialist help professional helps help could be uh, substance abuse counselors like I want to be like I'm contemplating or I am actually diving into it uh, to, to seek that education that is a professional I, a doctor um, 
AA has also sponsors, if that's what you your loved one is uh, uh, achieving right now, possibly going through AA or uh, what's the other one, NA. So those are professionals. Ask a health professional uh, to help you search online because they know the key words for addiction and they can help you with that. Um, I'm sure they're more than happy to help you with that. Also, you can utilize going to the library. The library has tons of information besides its uh, online information that you can get not only in your home, but you can also go online there because they do have also people that know how to search online. I realize that a lot of people aren't... Uh, too computer savvy and uh, certainly those um, uh, methods um, on searching online can be also helped by a person that knows how to use or utilize the Googles and the Yahoo's and all those good things. So those are uh, uh, another avenue to go by. Uh, you can also go for, to your local health facility and inpatient care centers that can uh, also that treat minor issues and, and there's somebody on staff there that could probably help you. Um, usually they don't mind um, just giving you some advice but be careful because not all advice that you get is going to work in your situation speak with a professional therapist or a counselor like I stated a substance abuse counselor is one way a therapist they will advise you on how to go about dealing with your loved ones addiction the worst thing about dealing with a family member with addiction is that family member does never or I should say is never thinking that you're serious about helping and when I say that is because no matter what you tell this family member no matter how much you're insisting that this family needs to get help they truly don't think that there is any penalty for not listening to you so you need to let family members know there are penalties but you also need to be very cautious in how you do that so again let's go right back to it uh, encourage your loved one to seek help. Don't say you have to do, you have to uh, get help or else. That's the worst thing to do because the or else is enough to make a loved one that is already addicted to dive further into addiction to alienate you from them or from your life. We will talk about tough love because there is going to be a time where you need to uh, show some tough love where well, you need to be more demanding but let's start slowly and then we go and become stronger so do not ignore the drug use that your loved one has instead accept the addiction and with the strain it is putting on the family try to work with the person that has the addiction and work out some kind of game plan what does that mean pretty much what that means is that don't just say no 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 you can't do it you can't do it you can't do it educate yourself on the addiction that your loved one has whether it's alcohol and or drugs educate yourself with the online methods that we just spoke about and then with your loved one that has the addiction sit down and come up with some sort of game plan on how to uh, work with this addiction how to seek recovery for this addiction what will it take to to get this person to actually accept that this person has an addiction and seek help respectively ask for or encourage your loved one to attend a doctor's visit a therapy session a session in other words ask them let's go to the doctor let's approach the doctor about your addiction let's see what the doctor says and if that particular person that family member does not want to seek uh, a doctor's opinion then how about a therapist and you know what key is offered to go with the addicted loved one in your family to the therapist sit there put your input uh, during the session with the therapist with your loved one show your loved one that you do not mind seeing a therapist because your loved one will have a much easier time being with you and a therapist than being just him or her and a therapist because now there's a third party involved it's a little bit more relaxing so that is um, uh, number two that we spoke about so let's go now I'm gonna uh, read up there a little bit so consider reading a self-help book there are so many self-help books at a uh, library or uh, Barnes and Noble any of those bookstores 
or speaking with a counselor about the appropriate way to address a loved one who is suffering from addiction. So a self-help book or a counselor can actually speak to you and address the situation to you, to the addicted family member, and also uh, to anyone else in your family. Uh, have like a family meeting because by now everyone in that family knows about this one individual that has the addiction so it's not uh, a foreign situation so let's all get together at a kitchen table come up with a game plan and and work this whole thing out learning how to communicate better can enable you to focus on conversations that make progress at, at a dinner table communication is very important and if you folks realize that every time I communicate with you I try to explain things in a matter that everyone can understand but also put a little bit of uh, motivation behind every uh, communication um, uh, article that we go through or uh, any sentence that I say motivation is the key word here on communicating with someone else do not and I repeat, uh, repeat do not blame this person for his or her addiction, threaten the person in any which way, or become um, in, involved in some kind of shouting match when you guys have this family meeting. Sit there, relax, listen before you speak, let the addicted family member explain why they think they are utilizing the drugs and alcohol. If it's a matter of peer pressure, if it's a matter of stress at home, come up with a game plan on how to fix the problem. Remember, the addicted person already has their problem and you can certainly meet this person halfway by get, taking care of your end and your family's end of the situation, meeting this addicted person halfway. So this is a person that has the addiction only needs to worry about their recovery, their sobriety. If there are problems within your home, fix them as soon as you can. Know your limits, limits and don't accept unacceptable uh, behavior. That is super important. Be prepared to maintain personal safety by cutting ties of all addicts behavior warrant, uh, that warranted. So if they're becoming physical, if they're becoming verbally uh, um, abusive to you, you need to know the limits and you need to not accept that behavior. You need to nip it in the butt. Behavior that may lead to, uh, to consider whether you need to separate yourself and or any other family. Number one uh, is, is that if you feel that you are in danger because of this addictive person, you need to either remove this person from your home, uh, put this person in a separate room at the particular time of the incident, or uh, maybe you and your family just need to leave the house for about an hour so let this person calm down. But do not accept unwarranted uh, behavior. Any abusive behavior, whether it's physically or verbal, is not uh, acceptable. If your family member or loved one is violent or abusive towards you or your other family uh, members or loved ones, please seek help immediately. It is unacceptable. Endangering the home or family with risky behavior such as using drugs near children or conducting drug deals on the property is illegal first of all because they're using drugs but if you have small children at home and this family member is uh, utilizing drugs and or alcohol but more so the drugs um, uh, and it's becoming abusive physically verbally or mentally be careful because you don't need anyone to call CPS and lose your small children due to this so you need to alienate yourself from the situation uh, if necessary, consider options such, that, such as reporting the addict's illegal behavior or civil, uh, to civil authorities. Folks, for my friend, and you know who you are out there, I have said this to you, you cannot accept the behavior. Uh, if there's a small child in your house, 
And if this person refuses to, to, to seek help, with or without your help seeking help, uh, you need to call the proper authorities. You need to have this person removed. You and your family can sure give this person time and leave for a little bit, an hour or so, but you can't leave your home permanently because of one other person's uh, addiction issues. It is easier to have this person removed and, and this is going to what we spoke about, the tough love, because it is so hard to imagine that you need to have a loved one in your family removed uh, from your home, but the consequences of not doing it is very, uh, very large, so you don't want to do that. Excuse me, I just want to take a sip of soda. Thank you. I get a, uh, a dry throat from talking, so so that's what we need to do. Do not accept unacceptable behavior, mentally, verbally, or physically. Now let's go into method number three, stage and intervention. We just spoke about that. My friend that, uh, you, um, that I have spoken about in, in this particular segment has not done this yet. My strongest recommend, uh, recommendation goes out to my friend is that you need to do this. If your loved one in your home refuses to seek help, refuses whatever you are um, offering this person, and you have a small child in your home, red flags are up everywhere. Now, at this particular junction, you have exhausted the first two methods you have exhausted every item in those two methods and nothing has helped. So what do we do? Then we need to go with a intervention. Ask for help from a professional. Let a professional dictate how does an intervention work. What do I need to do to get my loved one the help that he or she so desperately needs, maybe doesn't want, but needs. A professional will guide you. That professional will tell you to plan the intervention. Now, how do you plan an intervention? What is involved in planning an intervention? Decide who should be there. If you have small children, please get somebody to babysit those small children. Uh, when I say babysit, preferably in someone else's home. Because this intervention more than likely is going to happen in your home. So please have somebody watch the small uh, children. Who will lead the session? Usually it's the head of the household. In my friend's particular case, you know who you are, it's you. Uh, it could be the father. It could be the grandfather. If you're a single mother, it's you. If you're a single father, it's you. So who is going to lead the session? And whoever leads the session is the one that's going to be the speaker. We don't need to have shouting matches at the table or in a room because it's you, your husband, your wife, uh, a couple other siblings, and everybody's yelling at this addicted person. That's counterproductive. It's not going to help with the intervention. One head of the household speaks to the person that's addicted. How will you involve the, uh, the addicted person? This is how you will involve. You will ask this particular person, yourself, and whoever else is going to be during this intervention to sit at the kitchen table. Softly we start speaking. We start speaking about this person and their behavior and their addiction, etc. Many interventions are led by a trained drug therapist. If that's what you want to do and you have the insurance and or the money, by all means, that's what you need to do. Head of the household does work, but a drug therapist works better. Remember, they are the trained professionals. Um, a family counselor works. So you have drug therapists, family counselor, head of the household. Consider all these options while planning an intervention suited to your loved one's situation. Let's not bring up every negative thing during intervention. Let's only bring up why are we doing this intervention? Is it because of your alcohol? Is it because of your drugs? Or is it both? That's what we need to concentrate on. Confront your loved one about his or her, her substance abuse. 
bring it to their attention. I'll tell you something right now. They know they have it. They avoid it. All the years that I was drinking, no matter how much uh, people brought it to my attention, I ignored it. Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. I thought I was the perfect drunk. Yes, to people that didn't know me, I looked very sober at all times. And I, I, I was a working alcoholic, but people that knew me, that knew everything about me as far as my personalities, my mood swings, they knew when I was drinking. So confront your loved one about his or her substance abuse. Bring it to their attention. This is during the intervention now. Some interventions involve a series of personal requests from loved ones to ask the addicted person about detox programs, about AAs. Uh, you can even bring up my videos if you'd like. Uh, I did bring this up to my friend uh, yesterday. I said, this person in your family that has the issue, let him watch yesterday's edition of Take Your Life Back because yesterday's edition was such an important uh, had such an impact on so many people that I just knew that if this particular loved one of this um, um, family would see it, it might give 1% chance of opening their eyes. Whether this particular person watched it or not, I don't know, but I did bring that up. Detox has um, uh, programs have therapists, counselors, um, they have the 12 steps like AA has. Uh, I have the 16 alternative steps to AA's 12 steps, so you can utilize some of those. Be prepared for what you will do depending on your loved one's response. Your loved one is going to respond in a um, matter of uh, denial. They're going to respond in an argumentative way, so be prepared for a rebuttal to their response. But you are the sober person. You need to act as such respond in a subtle way, non-argumentative way, and, and, uh, and, and respond in a, uh, uh, a way that shows that there are alternatives to drugs and or alcohol. It is not the dead end that we're at, it's the beginning of a new beginning. Tell this person, let's start today. Tell this person a sober today will make for a, tometer, a better tomorrow. Tell this person, ask Ralph, he'll tell you. Because a sober today will make a better tomorrow. Offer your emotional support, but do not enable the addiction. What does that mean? Do not give money to your loved one to allow him or her to continue to buy drugs and or alcohol. If your loved one needs money and says, I need it for whatever reason, whether it's to buy a new pair of pants, to buy shaving cream, to buy food, go with the person. Help the person purchase this. If you give this person any amount of cash, you are enabling the addiction. You are helping the addiction. I'm not saying you shouldn't trust this person. Don't trust the drugs and the alcohol that is enabling your loved one to do and smoke and drink. The addiction is the disease. The addiction makes a person do things that they usually wouldn't do. It's not a matter of trust not giving money. It's a matter of not trusting the disease. If this person needs anything, go with this person and purchase. And if you don't have time to do it, send another family member to do it another responsible family member to do it but do not uh, excuse me but do remind your loved one that you are ready and willing to help him or her find help don't give money for anything and show that you are here for support in supporting this particular loved one in finding help you will find the help for this person. Do not rely on the addicted person to find help because the addicted person um, is weak in mind when it comes to finding a new way out of substance abuse. What does that mean? The motivation level of your addicted loved one is not there to find help. The motivation of your loved one is there to continue substance abuse. Not everyone hits rock bottom right away, not everyone goes cold turkey. I 
six or seven times relapsed until I finally hit rock bottom June 22nd, 2013. So you need to be your person's proxy, your addicted family's uh, uh, member. You are their proxy. You are their guardian when it comes to this. You have to make decisions on how to get help, who to get help from, how will we pay for this uh, help? Do we have insurance? This is These are all decisions that you, as the sober, head of the family, has to make. As much as you have to make those decisions, it is the intervention that you also have to, to make. You have to make that decision. In the beginning, your addicted family member is going to look at you as the bad person. Just like a child, when the child gets punished, looks at the parent as the bad person. But at the end, at the end of the day, at the end of this long journey, this loved one will thank you for the rest of their lives. And this is what's the, the, the key word here, the rest of their lives, because they will have a rest of their life. They will have a sober rest of their life. They will have a clear rest of their life. And that's because you had to make those tough decisions. You had to make the decision possibly about intervention. You had to make a decision on where and who to seek help from, which therapist to use, who should sit at the kitchen table to discuss uh, intervention and discuss all issues concerning what's going on with the addicted family member and what's going on in the household. It's you that makes all these decisions and it's you that's going to look like the bad person, but it's also you that the addicted family member eventually, hopefully, will thank. Develop effective communication skills. What does that mean? That means do not yell, do not bring up negativity, bring up only positive, motivational uh, statements and show this person that there is true love within your heart on any intervention or any help that you're seeking for this person. Many difficult relationships can fail because of communi uh, communication. You, your family members, and your loved one that has the addiction are all a family and any communication that crisscrosses will cause nothing but grief. It might even get worse in your household. So you need to learn to communicate effectively. So now that we talked about this, and the title of this particular segment was How to Deal with a Drug-Addicted Family Member. These are methods. Method number one, search online for information about the addiction. Method number two, seek professional and specialist help. Method three, stage and intervention that is the biggest method right here and it, you might have to utilize that i know my friend and you know who you are again i know that's what you need to do you've come to the two paths in the road and you need to take one of those paths take the right one the intervention path is the right way to go and number four set boundaries on this addiction and how to deal with it. Don't accept unacceptable behavior. Now let's talk about my contact information. This was, uh, before I do that, but this was a, a thing that I had to do, like I said, last night in bed, thinking about my friend and, and I feel so helpless because we have tried to seek help for this individual. We've made phone calls, emails, we found a rehab center and um, after speaking to my friend last night, texting my friend, I just felt so helpless. And I, I'm, I'm glad that I got up in the middle of the night, uh, although I had some other things to do, but I'm glad I got up and did a little research on this. And I am so happy that I could put this on a video and I hope the impact of this for anyone, more importantly for my friend, but for anyone, I hope the impact of this is, is nothing but good. Okay, contact information. Ralph.Friedrichs at yahoo.com is my email. That's R A L F dot F R I E D R I C H S at yahoo.com. You have my phone number. That's for regular phone and for texting. 631 599 0218. 
My website is www.clearviews.info. That's C L E A R V I E W S dot I N F O. On my website, you have all my videos, you have articles, you have uh, newspaper clippings. All the articles, newspaper clippings, and uh, some other videos are all by medical doctors, therapists, and psychologists, and psychiatrists, and they are there uh, and written by them. They are the medical professionals. It is I who take their uh, opinions, their articles, and I give them to you to read to educate yourself because we spoke yesterday that addiction recovery seeking sobriety is not just words it's educating yourself it's fulfilling every day the destiny of sobriety it's to continuously educate yourself you need to keep doing that so utilize www.clearviews.info for that now on Facebook I have my clearviews.info page I've stated this before and I'm gonna say it again um, any person that like any copy of my uh, my videos, I have um, three videos on each DVD that I can produce for you. I'd be more than happy to get it over to you. What you can do is just private message me or email me and let me know which which videos you'd like to have put on a DVD, and I'd be more than happy to ship them to you. And there is no charge for that. I just want you to utilize my my DVD or utilize my videos utilize it to have an impact on someone's life if not your own because that's the whole purpose of these videos I want to help people I want people to feel what I have felt since June 22nd 2013 sobriety is a wonderful thing get rid of the alcohol get rid of the drugs start a whole new life start a sober today for that better tomorrow because you know what if you believe that you can do it if you truly believe you can do it you can definitely achieve it believe it to achieve it so those are my contact information so let's just go quickly over some different methods of uh, uh, recovery you can utilize my methods which again I have told you I have 16 alternative steps to AA's 12 steps what does that mean my alternative steps are similar to their 12 steps. Difference is, is that the wording is a little different and the methods are a little bit different. Methods meaning what what they seem to to put on paper I feel is it just so uh, generalized it's 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 too um, formatted like a textbook that I utilized words that are more understandable and easier to, uh, to communicate to other people should you have to. So I have the 16 alternative steps to the 12 steps. Then you have AA which is a huge organization with uh, a lot of results and uh, if you search online there are different opinions on how well it works however I do know a lot of people that have utilized AA and it works great for them so that is another way and then, of course, you have rehab centers for you po uh, people that are a little weak when it comes to uh, supervision, like I used to be, because every time my wife would leave the house or anyone wouldn't be around, I'd go right to drinking. So if you have that issue and you feel that you cannot be left alone at home during your recovery, uh, that you might go to the refrigerator for that beer or you might go into the nightstand for that joint, check into a rehab center that's what they're there for they will give you 24 7 treatment they have the 30-day treatment program 60 and 90 utilize them I have learned something from my experience with my friend uh, who uh, has this particular family member that there are institutions out there that will take you in and they're usually state-sponsored uh, if you have no insurance and or you don't have Medicaid uh, I didn't know this but uh, after doing a little research, and I have a friend uh, down in Florida who, who's heavily involved in this, he had recommended a certain phone number which I called and I found out um, that these programs are available. The reason this particular person's family member didn't want to utilize this uh, program, or this rehab method, was because this person didn't want to detox completely without self-medicating or a doctor rec uh, prescribing a medication to alleviate one which is uh, 
He's detoxing from the drugs that he's existingly using, and he wants to have another drug put into his system to, to kind of counterbalance the situation. No. Detox 100%. Bring yourself back to the way you used to be. Bring yourself back to the way God created you to be. One drug for another is not the answer. That's like me saying, okay, I'm quitting to drink vodka, but while I'm quitting, I'd like to have a beer or two. It doesn't work that way. It's either you quit or you don't. And if you don't, face the consequences. Consequences is losing your family. Consequences and losing your job. Losing your life. Those are your consequences. So face those or just eliminate the drugs and alcohol totally out of your life. You don't need them. You really don't. So, if you just turn to God, ask God for help, He will help. You need to go back to the way you were born, which is with nothing in your system. Please do that. It works. Sobriety works. It works for me. It works for millions of other people. It's mind over matter. That's all it really is. If you believe it here, you will achieve it there. I guarantee it. The problem is, is that so many people are so weak-minded that they believe that they cannot live without alcohol and or drugs. But you can. What used to be looking forward to vodka, what used to be looking forward to rum or beer, is now looking forward to possibly a piece of cheesecake. Yes, I drink a lot of diet soda. It's not the healthiest thing, but I'll tell you this right now. Drinking your soda drinking milk water whatever is a lot better than drinking alcohol if you smoke marijuana you probably smoke cigarettes I'm gonna ask you this right now when you quit smoking marijuana or doing whatever drug or alcohol you need to really quit everything that is hurting your body they make those electronic cigarettes during one of our recent visits uh, we had a little show set up for our business uh, I ran into a person, uh, this hot dog truck driver or Zeppeli guy or whatever they call him, and he was using this electronic cigarette and he told me smoking this is almost identical as smoking to a regular cigarette. The only difference is, is you're eliminating a lot of the uh, bad things that are in regular cigarettes. So utilize that. If you smoke marijuana, you're probably smoking cigarettes. If you're going to quit marijuana, quit the cigarettes. Get rid of them. Go to the electronic cigarettes, try the patch. Eliminate everything that's so bad for your body. Get rid of it all. Do it for yourself. Don't you want to live longer? Don't you want to be around for your loved ones? And if you want to be selfish enough to say, I don't care about myself, then do it for them. If you love your wife and your husband and your children, do it for them. They deserve to have you. I deserve to have you. I need your order. I need you to watch my videos. So please, starting today, August 7th, 2014, make today the first day of the rest of your life. I want to give a couple shout outs. We're getting up to 38 minutes again. My friend up north, I hope you're doing well. I haven't heard from you in a couple days. Uh, I'm assuming that you're um, somewhere where you cannot either get to internet or to telephone for texting. Uh, so I'm assuming everything's going good. You're approaching your one month anniversary, which is this weekend. I congratulate you on that. Please, when you see this video, just give me a text if you can or Facebook me or email me. Let me know that you're doing okay because I truly am concerned for you and I'm happy for you. My friends down in Virginia, Texas, Florida, Georgia, I hope you all are doing well. Um, I know every time I do these videos I uh, send them to you whether it's through Facebook, whether it's through YouTube or Twitter or through um, uh, text messages. Of course my friend in Virginia I won't text message uh, my videos to you because I didn't realize that you had to pay for your minutes. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope all Folks that uh, that continuously watch my my videos, 
get such an impact out of these videos and I hope to God that if you don't need to, to watch these videos for yourself because you don't have an addiction that you take my videos and give it to a person or show it to a person in your family that has an addiction or at work every person that watches this video including myself knows a person that has an addiction problem you can't tell me you don't know one person that doesn't have an addiction problem because I guarantee you every person has someone in their life indirectly that has an addiction problem so please if you know somebody forward my videos to them send them to www.clearviews.info a lot of information a lot of tools different methods on how to live a good life with an addiction because you're giving yourself the education to work with the addiction. Simple solution to working with addiction is A, get rid of the substance, get rid of the drugs and alcohol. B, learn how to live with the addiction. And C, continue to educate yourself. Educate yourself daily. I do it daily. I do it in my sleep sometimes. I'll wake up out of nowhere, jump on my computer and just look something up because it came up during my sleep. My friend that has the family member issue, I hope that this particular video helps you make a decision, helps you make the right decision because you and your situation was the inspiration of me making this video. It's for you to take, to do something in your own family and hopefully get good results and in the meantime this video being that was created on the concept of your situation will help other people that have the same situation because I guarantee you there are other people out there that have the same situation thank you very much uh, we're up to 41 42 minutes now so I know it's time for me to go and I hope to God that we talk to each other real soon I will do another video remember a sober today makes for better tomorrow and if you believe it here you can achieve it there have a great day if you need me 631-599-0218 www.clearviews.info facebook clearviews.info 844-393-9355 have a great day. Have a great weekend. More importantly, have a sober weekend.